Welcome back to my channel, my name is Ripestray and today we'll be exploring the life of Luxury Channel. What should we expect from their videos? A team of two men who investigate locations that are experiencing something frightening or unusual. The two investigators usually find these locations by getting sent emails by a person who's familiar with the problem. If it catches the team's interest, they interview the person and head over to the location to start investigating. Sounds like any of your normal investigation shows, right? Yeah, buckle up because this is going to be an interesting and very strange ride. Actually, I feel like a few of these cases can be connected together by its unusual creatures. So yeah, sit back, relax, maybe eat a snack, and enjoy. To begin, we're going to start off with the first video titled Dolphin Man Found in Her House. <laughs> the reason why we're starting off with this video specifically is because it's the first one and it introduces us to a lot of the elements we're going to expect throughout the rest of the series. We also get introduced to the two investigators, Parker and his cameraman Chester. To describe Parker and Chester, Parker is like the host or the face of the team, welcoming the audience, explaining what they'll be doing, and the main one commenting directly towards the camera and the one asking the questions during the interviews. He's also the one who's more inclined to hear out and believe the people they're interviewing and his main goal is to help the people who contact them. I would say he's the more empathetic of the two. The reason why I say this is because Chester is a bit of a skeptic. He seems to never believe the people they're interviewing and assumes they're crazy and always wants to leave when things get boring. Don't get me wrong, sometimes Chester does worry for the people who contact them, but usually it seems like he could care less. And depending on the situation, Chester could be in the right, while in other situations, Parker is in the right. Regardless of their differences, they're quite an amusing team. And the one thing they can both agree on is that when things get too intense, they immediately grab the person who's potentially in danger and leave. So they both have the instincts to protect people when it's important, so they're technically good guys despite what they might say prior to the chaos that happens during these investigations. Now that we got that out of the way, it's time to explain the events of the Dolphin Man video. In the beginning, Parker explains to us that he received an email from a woman named Bernice who suspects something is living in her home and during the interview, Bernice reveals that the home was in a dangerous neighborhood next to a mental hospital and because of this, it was hard to rent out. This is important to know because this means no one is currently living in the house. However, the neighbors claim that they've been hearing screeching from the home. This is what clued in Bernice's family that there's something wrong. Bernice personally doesn't want to investigate and this is why she contacted Parker and Chester. So after the interview, the two went straight to the house and began to investigate. Usually they set up cameras and watch from the safety of the car, but for this video, they were investigating personally. At first the home seemed empty and pretty normal until they spotted it, the dolphin man. Which I think is a dude in body paint and screeching like a dolphin. The man chased the two investigators out of the house and after this encounter, they contacted the police and later showed the footage to Bernice as proof that there was indeed someone in the house. Because they contacted the police, the situation was now out of their hands and the video ends by showing us their email which the audience can use if they want to contact them about another case that they can investigate. This is pretty much how the majority of the videos are like. They get sent an email, interview a person, investigate a location, and potentially run into something dangerous and capture footage of it. And if there's someone else in the house that could potentially be in danger, both Parker and Chester run out with the person and they take them to their home to ensure their safety. It's a pretty simple formula that's easy to follow, but things get increasingly more strange and dangerous for the two as we continue watching. For example, the first few stalker videos in which many but not all of the stalkers are clearly far from being a normal person. I like to call this the stalker saga. Kenzie, Emily, Audrey, Victoria, Lydia, and Shelby are all victims to stalkers, but each have different situations. For starters, Kenzie has been receiving unusual phone calls and she keeps getting sent photos of herself through her window. To confirm her suspicion, the two investigators set up their cameras and actually caught footage of her stalker. But it wasn't an ordinary person. It was a giggling figure that was crawling on all fours. And when Parker and Chester ran in to catch the stalker, it just vanished. Not even the police could find it. As for Emily, when her parents are away and she's home alone, that's when her stalker appears. She actually caught footage of the stalker, which looks like a frighteningly tall man. During the investigation, they caught footage of the tall man, but unexpectedly, the cameras went out. When they returned, the man just vanished. As to how the man has been entering the home, they discovered that there was an opening in the attic that was hiding within a closet. Then there's Audrey, who keeps getting followed and having her items suddenly go missing. During the interview, the two investigators actually caught the stalker outside the window, and it was a crazy thin man who seemed obsessed with sweet smells and claims that he wanted to taste her. The stalker then got away in his car, but they managed to catch footage of the license plate and turned it into the authorities. Compared to the other two stalkers, this one doesn't seem to be anything potentially paranormal, but it's still frightening because of his sick obsession over Audrey. Speaking of obsessiveness, Victoria's stalker is also obsessed with her. But her stalker is the least frightening one in my opinion. Still dangerous, but not as intense as the others. Her stalker turns out to be a guy wearing an old man mask who she once dated and he apparently took photos of her feet. In the end of the video, she told the investigators to leave and she stayed with the stalker, but the alarming thing was that the investigators never heard from her since that night. So yeah. Concerning. After her is Lydia who has been hearing voices coming from her vent and during the investigation they discovered an insane man living in her basement. She's no longer living there and the footage was then shown to the authorities. 
Lastly is Shelby, who's been catching a stalker outside of her home, and the one time she tried getting close, they suddenly vanished. We actually see this happen in the video because when the investigators tried chasing after it, it vanished as well. But unexpectedly, it appeared in front of Shelby's window. They all left the house after this encounter, and just like Lydia, Shelby no longer lives in the house. There are more cases that revolve around creepers around someone's home, but I'll just stop there for now because these were the first case videos before things get increasingly more intense for the investigators. So what can we take away from these first videos? Parker and Chester have equal chances of running into troubled people as they can something more monstrous. Clear examples being the crawling figure, the tall figure, and the vanishing figure. This is significant to take note of because this means that there are way more dangerous things than we initially thought. It gets especially more concerning when we realize a few of the next cases are of people who have strange experiences with people already living with them. I call this the false loved one saga. <laughs> The channel actually has many videos that revolve around a roommate or a family member with each person having their own situation, but I'm not going to cover every single one of those videos. In this part of my analysis, I'm going to cover specific videos that could be linked together due to the similarities. What is this link? A loved one or family member who either went on a trip or got into an accident and returned to something different. And the people that I'm going to be focusing on is the one with Annabelle, Emily, Anna, Leah, and Candice. There's also two others, but I'll get to that later. We're going to begin with Annabelle. Annabelle's brother changed after returning from a trip. He locks himself in his room and he doesn't speak with his sister anymore. He only looks at her with a creepy smile. Worried for her safety, they contacted Parker and Chester and during the night, they caught footage of her brother acting strangely, crawling on all fours and attempting to break into his sister's room. The two investigators managed to enter the house before anything worse could happen and they left with Belle. She now lives with their parents and that's where the video ends. Take note on the fact that her brother changed after a trip and attempted to break into her room. Now next up is Emily, who also has a family member that changed, her father. During the interview, we learn from Emily that her father went on a hunting trip and when he returned, he was different. And during the investigation, we get shown footage verifying her claims, from staring at the wall to groaning randomly. But the most unsettling thing was when he entered Emily's room and called for something to enter. What that thing was, was an unsettling creature that was crawling on the walls. Of course, Parker and Chester ran in and were briefly attacked, but they managed to leave the house with Emily. Sadly, they never discovered what was wrong with her father. And now the next person is Emma, but instead of a person, it's her dog. Her dog ran away into the woods and when he returned, he was different. Her dog is aggressive around light, his skin doesn't look like it fits his body, and when he moves there's a cracking sound that could be heard. The investigators actually got the opportunity to see the dog and Parker immediately knew something was indeed wrong with it. Later in the night, they caught footage of the dog barking and making unusual noises before leaving its room and entering Anna's room. While watching her, the dog suddenly stood up on two legs. Anna woke up and immediately started screaming. Of course, the investigators charged into the house and the dog ran away after hearing them. They gave chase, but all that they found was the dog's skin or a suit, and whatever was wearing it was running into the woods. I could be wrong, but that thing does not look human. Anyways, the investigators immediately left the house with Anna, and we learned that Animal Control managed to locate her actual dog, meaning whatever was living with her wasn't her dog. Was it a man in a costume? Something more monstrous? Eh, we could only assume for now. I believe it's something monstrous. Next up is Leah, whose sister was in an accident, and when she came back, her face was covered in bandages, and she's been acting differently and randomly walks into the woods. Chester suspects that that isn't Leia's actual sister, while Parker is more sympathetic for the sister and claims it's understandable why she's acting differently because the accident must have affected her a lot. We then move on to later in the night, and Chester heard noises coming from the sister's room and caught her speaking with someone, but after opening the door, no one was inside. Chester tried telling this to Parker, but he didn't believe him and just told Chester to stop bothering her. Honestly, Parker usually doesn't listen to Chester, but this time around he really should have, because obviously there's something wrong with Leah's sister. And I could be wrong here, but it looks like the sister sucked out the soul of Leah. Anyways, the sister led Leah, who now has a permanently screaming expression on her face outside, and there was a creature waiting for them in the woods. When the investigators woke up, they discovered that both of the sisters were gone, and after looking through the footage, they realized what happened. Since that day, the investigators tried getting into contact with Leah, but both her and her sister were gone and no one has heard from them. So sad, because unlike the others, Leah didn't get off easy and didn't get to escape. Speaking of which, there's another case with a person who didn't get off easy and it's Candace, whose son is the problem. After Candace's husband died, her son took a trip in the woods and when he returned, Tommy, her son, began to act creepily and for some reason can't stop growing. During the investigation when everyone was asleep, they caught footage of Tommy's limbs growing unnaturally long and when he entered his mother's room, apparently he sucked out her spinal fluid. After this happened, Parker and Chester went to check up on her and that's when they discovered a dark stain on her back and noticed how weak she got. When they reviewed the footage, that's when they witnessed what actually happened to her. She refused to let them call the police on her son so they stayed the night with Candace to ensure her safety. Sadly, on the second night, Tommy broke into his mother's room and took her away. They're both gone. The investigators then got into contact with Candace's sister and shockingly learned that Tommy died a year ago. Whoever that was, it wasn't Tommy. But here's the thing, that isn't the end of Candace's story. There's a continuation which mentions Candace's sister again, Doris. 
Initially, Tommy and Candace were missing, but according to Doris, it turns out they're both alive and living in a new house. Tommy is continuing to harass his mother while terrorizing the neighbors. Doris is obviously worried for her sister's health, and this is why she contacted Parker and Chester, in hopes they could save her. Chester doesn't want to get involved with Tommy again, but Parker wants to redeem himself of failing the first time, so they continued with the case. During the investigation, they discovered the sickly condition of Candace. And they tried talking to Tommy to get him to stop, but he responded by saying that he wanted to wear her skin like a sweater. Tommy sadly couldn't be reasoned with, and they were even attacked. Later, we see Candace again, and we see the number of injuries on her back. If I had to guess, it's probably from the times Tommy sucked out her spinal fluid. And I was right to assume this, because later on, we see Tommy sucking on her back. Turns out she's willingly letting Tommy suck out her spinal fluid. The reason for this is because he has to eat, and as a mother, she probably just wants to help her son. It's quite sad. Anyways, do you want to hear the actual insane thing from this video? Parker and Chester are staying the night, in the house, with this creature that can suck out your spinal fluid. This is insane because of obvious reasons, and Chester acknowledges this. But Parker is too determined to help Candace to leave, so they stay the night. As they slept, Tommy's body grew in length and he crawled out the window, likely to torment the neighbors, and when he returned, he was probably thirsty, so he snacked on his mother's spine. Ugh. The footage was shown to Candace and Doris, and they tried telling Candace this needs to stop, but she refuses. She cares for her son too much. After this, it's the second night, and both Parker and Chester boarded up the house to keep Tommy inside. Even Doris stayed the night, and as everyone slept, Tommy was clearly frustrated that he couldn't leave through the window like last night. Tommy sucked his mother's spinal fluid again, then he broke into Doris's room and sucked her dry. Yikes. As for Parker and Chester, they eventually heard the commotion, but it was too late for Doris while Candace was getting dragged outside the house. Tommy took her into the woods, and instead of running away and leaving like Chester recommended, Parker chased after Tommy. Sadly, they couldn't find them, and they weren't sure if Candace was still alive. They sadly failed again. Now, before I get to the point I'm trying to get at, there are two other videos that I also need to mention, but I won't go into too much detail. There's Debbie, whose little brother changed drastically after an accident and is constantly feeling hungry. Spoilers, he ate his older brother at the end of the video, and I think he also ate Debbie. And then there's also Bailey, whose father also changed after an accident. Spoilers, he dragged his daughter into a hole and they disappeared. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Debbie's little brother and Bailey's father share something in common with Candace's son. After unexpectedly changing, they each have unnaturally long arms and they have an obsession with eating or dragging people away. This makes me believe that whatever they are, they are a similar type of creature and this is important to my theory. So think back on all the videos that I mentioned so far, starting with Annabelle all the way up to Bailey. The other thing they all share in common is the events that happened prior to their loved ones changing. They all were involved in an accident or went on a trip, probably in the woods, which led to them returning as something different. My theory about this whole thing is that there's creatures in the woods or creatures who cause accidents, and they're using these opportunities to snatch people up to either take their skins or to eat them. All these creatures that we saw in the videos are likely a similar species. Let me go into more detail. As we saw in the video with Leah, her quote-unquote sister took her into the woods and there was a creature waiting for them there. She then disappeared after this. And then there's Anna's video whose quote-unquote dog was actually a white creature that was wearing a dog suit, and it ran into the woods and also disappeared. In my opinion, this creature looks pretty similar to the one in Leah's video, making me believe that they're the same type of monster, creature, paranormal thing. Whatever these creatures are, I believe they're the source of what's changing people. And look, in Emily's video, I believe her father tried doing what Leah's sister did to Leah. He brought the creature into her room for a reason, so maybe he was trying to give that creature access to snatch her body or to change her? If Parker and Chester weren't there, Emily could have ended up becoming a monster like Candace's son or Debbie's brother. And if not that, then maybe into just food or still turned into a creature but slightly different from the others. Whatever the case is, these creatures are wandering out into the woods and ruining people's lives by corrupting their loved ones or replacing them and taking advantage of the person's family. Again, obviously Leah's sister isn't actually her sister. She was probably body snatched and she follows the orders of whatever's in the woods like Emily's father. Then there's Candace's son Tommy who clearly isn't Tommy anymore because we learned that Tommy died a year ago. Whatever is pretending to be Tommy is just a creature that's using Candace's love for his son so it can continue to feed off of her spinal fluid and suffering. At first these videos just seem like two guys investigating random locations with random dangerous threats but there are things that link them together and there's dark forces in the background and it seems like these creatures are just leeching off of humanity. These creatures have one goal and that goal is to either feed on humans or to make more creatures that will then torment even more humans, and they are probably spreading some type of illness, infection, or curse that's making people into monstrous creatures as well, so the torment can continue. They might want to take over humanity. Uh, okay, taking over humanity and spreading this monster disease is probably a stretch, and I might be looking too deep into this, but maybe, just maybe, I'm onto something. Or I'm dumb, you tell me. The comment section is there for a reason. I tried my best to explain my thoughts, so I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. But anyways, there are obviously more videos in the Life of Luxury channel, but I don't want to rob you of that experience because honestly, it's a it's an amusing watch and I do highly recommend watching the videos. Sure, some of the acting is questionable, but it can get genuinely frightening at some moments. And each video has their own unique issue from the person sending the email to Parker and Chester. So go watch the videos that I didn't cover here. Or watch them all. Do what you like. Go have fun. The links are in the description. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Again, my name is Ripa Estrella, and if you haven't subscribed, please 
subscribe and leave a like, leave a comment, do what you like. I don't know. And goodbye. Have a good day.